Sure. Uh, uh, Richard? I'm here, but I just looked at our regulations. I If we're 11, we need a majority, and I think that's six. We have six? Yep. Yes, good. We got a quorum. Sorry. Thank you. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bev? Here. Uh, Gordon? Gwen? Okay, no Gwen. Uh, Ace? Here. Melissa? Here. Hannah? Um, and Spencer? No Spencer. And then we have a vacant chair space. Uh, it does look like uh, Laura Baker is joining us. And I'm here. And Edgar, yes, excuse me. Uh, so, Edgar, you do have a uh, quorum. Um, okay, awesome. Hopefully, uh, more folks will join us. Um, and so, next we have the public comment. Um, we have Laura here. Laura, would you like to speak? Why not? So very small announcement that uh, the property at 23 Laurel Street, which is going to be 20 affordable townhouses, is under construction. So if you are interested, give it a drive by. Um, it looks very different. It's going to be it's really a nice site, honestly, when I go on it. So just yay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Laura. Um... And then on our agenda, we have uh, the approval of the uh, Housing Partnership uh, April meeting minutes. Uh, if we can have a motion to approve. I'll motion. Second. Uh, motion made by Gordon, seconded by Richard. Um, do we have any discussion, any uh, edits or um, um, corrections to make to the uh, minutes? Um, any other discussion or um, otherwise um, we would um, call the roll. To approve. Should we go by um, just just order call names? out names? Yeah, just call out names and we'll answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Gordon. Yes. Uh, Bev. Yes. Uh, Richard. Yes. Ace. Abstain. Spence. Uh, I was not, didn't have my audio working, so I, I can abstain, but I don't know what we're voting. Oh, okay. We're voting on the minutes from last. Oh, approved. That I can approve. Okay. Uh, Melissa? Yes. And did I call on Beth? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, yes for me. Uh, so the minutes are uh, approved uh, with uh, one abstention and one, two, three, four, five, six yes. Uh, so next on our agenda was to discuss uh, the housing partnership uh, mission and goals. Um, I also know that uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, nominations for chair and vice chair. Um, I didn't know if, if uh, folks wanted to go to one first and the other. Uh, to me, it makes sense the way it's on the agenda, but um, uh, if anybody's concerned about time, because this will probably be a bigger, the bigger section of our, of our meeting, it's our next topic, um, then we can do the nominations now, um, whatever folks think is best. I think the role is the most important thing, and we ought to delve into that first, and it may have bearing on on the second issue anyway. I, and I would say just let's be mindful of the time. Let's just save at least 15 minutes to go into the other agenda items, if not more. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah, uh, Ace? Um, somewhat relevant to this, uh, I wanted to say that based on the amount of time that I have, um, I think I need to leave the partnership. Um, so uh, I don't know if it makes sense for me to weigh in on these things uh, because I am going to be leaving. <laughs> Yeah. I value your opinion. Yeah, Ace, you got a really good mind for process and you've been here for two, you know, what, three years or whatever it is. So um, definitely please chime in. Uh, anyone else? So, um, yeah. Uh, let's uh, jump right in then. Um, did folks have a chance to look at the, um, uh, I didn't read the whole thing, uh, but uh, the um, the draft of the housing partnership member guide and um, there was also a link sent about the, uh, uh, the meeting, um, that happened a couple of years ago with the uh, developers. Um, I don't know how, it, you know, uh, some of that stuff will um, inform our our meeting tonight or this, our discussion now, but um, I wanted to see where folks were at with, with that um, uh, in regards to where to start our conversation. Well, Keith, I think you did a good job of, I mean, going beyond sort of the sort of the uh, stuff that comes from the you know open meeting and, and the in the ordinance. It, it, you know, you, you laid out sort of the key sort of spheres of activity that we've done in the past. You know, the, it's ad advocacy, it's recommending, uh, making recommendations, and there have been various opportunities to do that, not just with the CPA, but other things have come along. We used to be able to do the CB CBDG back in the day. Um, and education was always a big part of what we thought our mission was. Um, but I will say that, you know, where this commit, where this partnerships work best is when we've really had as like a project to really sink our, 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 our collective teeth into. So, and it's sometimes it's hard to keep those things going when we, 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 we get to a point where we can advance something and then it's really not up to us to take it any further. And I think that leads to a lot of frustration with the members um, and realizing maybe there's not really a role for us or for me here. Um, but um, and then I think there's more in the history that we could pull into this. I know I when I joined back in, um, it was been 12 years, I think, you know, there was a lot of things that were going on at that time that I don't see here. Rich may be able to fill in, but I do remember all the stuff that was done with Smith College and the taking of land. And there was the, tr and then the tr that was when the trust was really important because there was money seated. There was the redevelopment and uh, buyouts at Meadowbrook and Hathaway Farms. And then there was, I remember even earlier on, I came on the tail end of it, there was discussion around condos and uh, issues around that as well. So there's a lot of, lot of past history. I just don't, I don't have all, all of that in my head either. Um, I do, uh, I'm glad to see that, with, you know, the one big funding project that we did was the, we actually got CPA money, which was to get the community support person and help people who were facing eviction in housing court, which is something that was very important to me because it aligned with work that I do. And I used it a lot in my practice. So but I just wanted to point out that I thought you did a good job, and, but there's more to be added. Great. Thank you, Gordon. Yeah, Richard? Uh, yes, and if this isn't a direction people want to go, you can stop me. But there have been a couple of times when people have come up and asked, you know, what 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 have we done and what are our accomplishments? And Gordon touched on those. And uh, I think it may be helpful. So in the early days, the city was and still is a direct recipient of community development block grant funds, which is not the case of all towns, which means that the city gets to decide uh, on its own uh, where those funds go. And the big change happened when the senior center came. So I'm going to talk about before the senior center came. Essentially, there was, you know, 
a substantial amount of funds, well over $100,000 every year, some years more, of community development block grant funds that was pretty much channeled to affordable housing. And the housing partnership was, by ordinance, the go-to committee that evaluated everything to do with affordable housing. And we can talk about just the parts that might seem tangential uh, that do affect affordable housing in, in other departments. But the critical thing that we did was we made recommendations to the mayor and the recommendations, it was technically the mayor's approval, but there was never a time that I can remember when our recommendation was not followed upon because we were thoughtful and deliberative and into the nitty gritty and we worked with developers and we tweaked their plans and we balanced competing um, uh, requests for funds. And, you know, we were involved in a whole host of things. We had home improvement projects. We had, you know, help your seniors stay in their house projects. We had lead paint projects. You know, we, when we took a tour around the city to look at properties, these were things that we had a hand in. And to some extent, you know, I'm going to make a pointed comment, you know, um, money matters. And because in theory, we were the ones who were making decisions, although it was ultimately the mayor's, you know, we had an impact. And that was empowering and meaningful to the people who were on the board. Uh, and I think it made it easier to feel like you were doing a worthwhile job. And I, uh, my editorial comment here, and I'll be blunt about it, is I think the city stymieing us on the trust fund or stymieing some other group doing the trust fund and us working with them is really uh, cutting the heart out of one piece that gave us a role and gave us something meaningful. And that doesn't mean that there aren't other things that we can do, legal advocacy and 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 bully pulpit in the paper and, and pointing out issues. But uh, that was a big chunk of what added meaning. And I'm sorry to see it go. And I think in my looking over the years, I'm guessing that a significant amount of... Um, the frustration is, you know, that and what Gordon alluded to that, you know, if we only can just sort of talk about things and and point them off in other directions without having a lot of um, agency over them, it's hard. So that's that's the historical perspective. And I don't frankly know what the role is for us. I think that the city is extremely short sighted, even if it. Um, you know, if it went to a whole big production to try and shepherd this citizen committee involved in housing and had that organizational meeting, you know, again, editorial here, when we were here and have been working in the trenches for so long, and when we have a project that we'd like to begin to work on, which is to see how to use a housing trust fund and the city being unwilling to do it, they're, they're at risk of losing an entire board that... that gives the city stature in, and I think may in some regards be necessary for certain things to have a partnership. That's it, sorry about being long-winded. Uh, yeah, Ace. Um, so speaking from a shorter term perspective, um, I definitely agree with what's being said that I have felt like, you know, the most positive and change can happen when we have a project that we're working on, you know, the big one being the uh, banning brokers fees um, for in the time that I've been here, that's been the biggest thing I've worked on. And that's been, you know, overall the most successful, um, the most stymieing has been interactions with, uh, you know, the mayor's team uh, where, you know, I feel like we're being treated as uh, hype men, if nothing else, uh, where, you know, we're here to support the decisions that the mayor wants to make as opposed to actually do things. Um, I was recently reached out to uh, by a citizen who was talking about wanting um, the lot on King Street to become housing 
and asking, you know, if there's something the housing partnership could do to help with that. And uh, as it currently is, I don't know that there is anything that we can do to help make that happen. Um, like we've talked about it in the past. Uh, we may have given a recommendation to city council uh, and that's that feels like it. And that feels bad. <laughs> I hear that. Um, I didn't finish one thought. I'm sorry. And um, in when the senior center was proposed, which is a wonderful thing, and I'm glad the town has it. It sucked up all of the CDBG funds for several years. And that was sort of the start of when um, it just took the role away from the housing partnership and other dynamics within city hall have accentuated that so, sorry i missed that thought thanks richard richard could you um clarify how did that event take us out of um the job of um approving cbg allocations well what happened is the senior center was such a big project and an important project, it essentially sucked up the entire amount of CDBG funds for initial construction and I believe also some debt payment so that there was no funds for CDBG for housing or just nominal funds for years. Uh, and that, that. Yeah, I, I get that part, but what about today? what why today oh yeah. um boy i don't think i want to go on record <laughs> I've <heard laughs> a thing about the power dynamics uh of what's happened in city hall over the past decade uh but no uh, I, f fair enough let me just I, suffice I just... to say it's there's been a trend toward consolidating power in the mayor's office uh, and I could give you examples all over city government where that happens. And uh, that's just the reality we're in. Uh, Is your question? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I was actually looking for the technical uh, question. Oh, if there was some yes, change. There is one other thing. Procedure. Okay. So, and this is, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll remember because it's a broken record I've been to. Um, you have copies of the ordinance and the ordinance is, enabling all of the city boards were independent ordinances that were enacted at a particular time. And I don't know how many years ago, but probably 10 or 12 or whatever, somebody will know, Northampton decide to codify and neaten its ordinances. I mean, they used to be in a binder in the clerk's office with things pasted on them. I mean, it was crazy. Um, and so essentially, if you look at our bylaws, you know, there's a whole bunch of boilerplate that they've pulled that uh, relates to every single board like us, you know, which is fine. But they also rewrote our powers and duties. Uh, and that's why I sent you the original one. Um, without it never came up at a housing partnership meeting. It was, we were never consulted. It was I mean, I'm still annoyed about it, as you can tell. Yeah. Uh, you know, it uh, just should not have happened that way. Um, and originally the thought was that we had agency over anything that might potentially affect affordable housing. So, for example, if the fire department um, has a mandate, for example, which happened to put in uh, CO detectors in every dwelling unit. Wonderful thing. There's different ways that they could go about it. They could do a stern, you know, a uh, letter to all the landlords and saying, you got 30 days and it's this fee and blah, blah, blah. Or they could have a, you know, informational meeting and here's how to do it. And here's resources. And we want to help you because we had identified that Northampton had more than 50% of its housing in one to four family houses, a lot of legacy landlords who were doing it on the side, who didn't know how to do things. And one of our prime mission 
because we realized every time one of those houses sold, there was a pressure on little a affordable housing that any action that the city took needed to be done in a way where we were saying, listen, we understand you're our housing partners. You know, there may be things that we have to do, but we want to work with you. And that was something that we essentially was part of our mindset. And there were pieces like that, that, you know, we were, you know, when there were zoning, anything that had to do to zoning that had affordable housing or, you know, parking issues downtown, all these things we weighed in on. Because if we could draw a line that said affordable housing, and that was stripped out of this ordinance. That Thank you. That's, that's painful to hear, but helpful. Um, I will say I read what you sent, and it was striking. Um, I almost felt like if we were actually going to do all that stuff, we would need Keith to work for us full time. Because um, it's a lot, especially if it's a busy time. Um, but... Um, as a newcomer, I will say the difference between that and today is, um, well, as I think others have said, it makes one wonder what uh, one is doing spending time this way. I should, I have to say one other thing, and this is with all due respect to Keith, you know, because he is, he is governed by forces that we don't control, but we have had been set up with administrative support personnel where the guidelines for them have been extraordinarily different and where their willingness to, in essence, work with subcommittees and tee up stuff and do research and bring things to us in a way that we could do um, was quantum different than than what we're doing now. And uh, that was a huge part of it, and I was remiss in not saying it. And I'm not, you know, I don't know the dynamics of what Keith's charge is, and I like him, and I think, you know, for what what our track is now, it, you know, I have no fault with that, but it it's a different animal now. Uh, yes, um, Spencer. Yeah, I am a super newcomer, and I know I mentioned this the last time when Carolyn was on the call, and I did peruse through the history and and everything like that. But I and and Richard, that was an excellent executive summary, and to really put context on everything, because I would agree only showing up, you know, this year, 9,000% of everything that you said and that effectively, you know, if they don't need us, right? I mean, it's a, a committee in name only, right? We, I mean, there's no, not that I want to be, you know, the ZBA and getting to decide, you know, what the hell my neighbors do. But if, you know, what bothered me the most, and I'm most happy to put this on record, is the what was clearly a lot of time and effort and energy put in by a number of individuals on the committee regarding reviving the housing trust, looking at doing some research, looking at other communities across Massachusetts and putting together, you know, a, whether you like it or not, a pretty detailed set, a, a detailed collection of information. And it was mind blowing to me to see that like dismissed in like five words. Um, and it's one thing if it was to go to say like the city council or to have some deliberation other than thanks, but this is stupid. Um, it just really belies, you know, the effort that really kind volunteering people are putting in um and so that was one thing and then the other thing and i know i mentioned this to carolyn but i'm happy to reiterate it here as well is i almost resigned on the spot and i'm happy to put this on record when she said well you know your job maybe you can go to the farmer's market and talk up housing like 
I'm sorry. I, I have plenty of things to do during the day and helping my city out is an honor and I want to be able to do it, but that's not it, right? And if that's what how the city is viewing our role, I mean, I would go so far as to say they just need to get rid of the housing partnership unless they feel like doing something with it because it's just so absurd, at least to me, and this is all recent history of, you know, like, then what am I doing? Like, I, I could, I mean, I'm pissed off and I didn't even spend, you know, 20 hours researching Martha's Vineyard and Amherst and things like that. And, and to have it just ixnade without so much as a discussion was just mind boggling. But anyway, that's, that's, those are my concerns. And I, I would, I mean, I don't have a lot of time. I hate to give this up, but I don't want to be toiling ineffectually. Um, and and that's that's my main concern. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Uh... I think a lot of us, if not all of us, feel uh, feel like that. Um, I know for myself, um, I actually cannot afford um, to give a uh, volunteer time anymore. So I'm, I, I've, I, um, I've actually been thinking for the last few months that I need to step back. Um, and um, in fact, I will. Um, uh, but um, uh I'm definitely looking to um, to have more of a action oriented um, uh, sort of you know task here on this committee um, and anything else that I do volunteer really. Um, otherwise, it's like uh, on a personal level, I have to um, I have to put my finances first and and go out and actually earn some income. Um, but uh, um, yeah, anybody else uh, have anything else to share? Well, if I could just add, <clears throat> excuse me, one thought. Um, it's not a, it's not a particularly creative thought, but it does feel as though everyone, unless there's somebody who hasn't spoken, in which case, please do, um, that we are at a crossroads, individually and collectively, and that. Um, the the question is, do we think that the potential of the housing partnership as either originally conceived or as modified for today's reality is important enough that we should fight for a job description which is meaningful? Or should we say having to fight to volunteer your time in a meaningful way <laughs> is not a satisfied use of time, which is pretty much where I've come to, uh, in which case, uh, you know, a, a resignation of all of us who feel that way would be a pretty powerful statement. I don't know if it would get anything done, but so uh, <clears throat> what next, I guess, is, is the question. You know, one other thing that we lost in, in the, it, with the change in the bylaw is that we you know when i started there used to be a, a city councilor part of this partnership and that was very powerful to have someone on the inside who could mm -hmm. help steer things through that we recommended we don't have that anymore and i was just looking back again at the original bylaw and there were there were designated seats from all from very powerful important committees within the city which we no longer have we have a we have plenty of wood still but but all the other things are gone um and, and it really was meant to be you know a way to bring all of those agent all of those different components of city government together in a meeting to talk about housing and that's not happening. We're just citizens really have no power <laughs> and we can sit here and, and debate that what we'd love to have see happen, but in the end of the day, it's not up to us and we don't have the authority to, to make those changes. Yeah, Bev, I take your point. Uh, it doesn't feel right to have to even fight for those the city in my way of thinking should be not necessarily fighting but 
spending time and effort and energy seeing how they can facilitate us, not us having to do it the other way around. <coughs> I will tell you, again, as a relative newcomer and, and as somebody who worked, <coughs> excuse me, for a developer during the, uh, shall we say, good old days of housing activism in Northampton, I'm not even sure how much of a priority housing is, except to the extent that people write and talk about it. Um, I know I said at the start of this that I was <clears throat> planning to leave the partnership based on time, among other things. Um, if the decision to have a bigger exodus is is made, I would happily sign on to that. But I know my personal decision is already made and I don't want to sway opinion based on that. Yeah, and I, I like what you said, Bev, a lot in that I, I do think, you know, if you were to ask anybody, it's obviously worth the fight. I think it's a question of how and, you know, and it, what are we fighting for? I mean, if we've Well, not so much. We all know what we're fighting for, but I, I don't know if necessarily um, that this committee is the most effective way to address the underlying problems that we all care about. You know, like Gordon was saying, we're effectively a bunch of citizens sitting around and Keith gets to listen to his talk and we're subject to open meeting laws. And I had to take that silly ethics thing. But, you know, other than that, I mean, where does it go? Um, and I just, I am not, housing is and will forever remain an issue in Northampton. I just think we need to, you know, to where is the best way for us as a group of people who care about housing to make our voices heard. And I mean, I can understand the resignation when, you know, if, if we spent a lot of time trying to contact developers and come up with like fact finding, all done on our own time, and then to sort of get unceremoniously checked by, I don't know the details, obviously, uh, by, you know, the planning department and say, you know, stay in your lane, as it were. Well, then what is our lane? If we can't ask developers why they can't make affordable housing and we can't advocate or try to come up with ideas to fund affordable housing and nobody wants to listen to us. I mean, I, it's really like we got, you know, I... <sighs> I hate to be a quitter uh, and I don't want to be the person who, you know, stomps their feet and complains and moans because, you know, I'm not getting what I want and I didn't get my participation medal. But I, I think there's something to be said for either a, a letter from all of us as a committee to the mayor and the city council on one side of the extreme, just expressing our frustration and on the other extreme is, you know, a mass resignation. I don't think the mass resignation would do anything without sort of a position statement to the matter. Um, and it might not go anywhere. And, you know, people in City Hall might just laugh at all those hippies over at the housing partnership, but at least they'll know why, right? And not to give them an ultimatum, but I don't think getting a job description is going to change the underlying problems because even if we had a job description that said go out and make northampton safe for affordable housing we've been trying to do that and we don't have any meaningful or tangible avenues to provide our findings to anybody other than ourselves effectively um, and I think conveying that maybe as a start to the mayor's office, copying the city council and saying, listen, 
you've got a collective report from the housing partnership that we think we're defunct. We have no authority. We, I don't know the history of you know the change, whether you categorize it as stripping of our powers or restructuring or whatever, but you've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people here who could be better served volunteering somewhere else. Um, like give us, I don't think we want a job description. I think we want authority or an avenue. And without that, what are we doing? And so I, I would suggest perhaps we write that and then couple it with a, if you don't address this, we're all resigning and you can go figure it out yourselves. And you can tell the state that you don't have a housing partnership anymore and this, that, and the other thing. But perhaps that's a middle ground between a mass resignation and, and we could cite in that letter, like we lost our chair because of the, the talking with developers, you know, Ace is leaving because, you know, this is stupid. Gardo's leaving because it's not worth his time and he can't afford to be here. Like, we all want to do it. Anyway, I'm ranting, but that's what I'm no, It's a good I, idea. Can I chime in on a few things? Um, I'm, you know, sorry to hear, um, you know, frustration, and I definitely understand the personal, um, you know, satisfaction in working towards anything, um, and definitely I'm feeling the crunch for time in my own personal life. Um, and so, you know, I like these meetings, and I, I do appreciate your time, so thank you for that. Um, but, you know, it, excuse me, um, I think you know you're in this position where you do have um you do have a voice and you know the city myself we um you know we we entrust you to um make recommendations and things like that and so i think a mass exodus although that is a message um we have trouble filling boards and administratively um it would set us back all a long time um, but also I think it'd be very demotivating um, for the remaining members, myself. Um, and I think, you know, like we're having this kind of um, these hard conversations to figure out, okay, how do we want to move forward? Um, and you guys, you all have been here for a little while. And I think um, whether it's this document or kind of revisiting um, the previous document or incorporating, you know, making a recommendation, say, hey, um, you know, we, we think having a city councilor on board, um, I think that's a worthwhile investigation to see if that's something we can do. Um, you know, I, on the Disability Commission, we have a city councilor. Um, it was Councilor Barge for many years, and then Councilor Dubs took over. Um, so I think that's definitely uh, something we can consider. Um, and um, so tangential, uh, kind of in the same time frame of doing the marketing, the partnership guide, I did look around the state and at what other partnerships are doing. And they kind of run the gamut of, you know, Amherst, they have the trust fund, so they're giving up money, but they've also done a ton of um uh advocacy and um kind of um uh education so they had a lot of forums where they've had they've focused on different things um and then you have other ones like um there's a lot of other trust funds that you know have very similar setup to Amherst but then like Sharon is it just seems like they get together and talk about housing and at least from their website and some of their minutes, it doesn't seem like they have kind of, um, but I'll leave that, but I just want to push back on the fact that we don't, are not concerned about housing. We are, I mean, I'm in charge of the housing choice grant. We're looking at four, three parcels right now to develop. And, you know, they started construction at the Broadbrook Greenway. Um, hopefully Habitat will take that over. I've applied to two other grants 
um, one to look at um, commercial uh, buildings to turn them over to um, uh, to housing, and we're looking at some other parcels to maybe do some other things. So, um, and you know the CDBG. So, um, and just I'll end here, but um, you know uh, this year for community development block grant, I am uh, doing our five year consolidated plan. So that is our five year plan, big um, uh, kind of umbrella that all of my yearly plans after that have to follow by law. Uh, and so when I first did that in 2020, I was brand new to being a planner, brand new to CDBG, brand new to being a partnership. At that point, I'd never met any of you in person. Uh, I don't think I've met any of you, mo mo a lot of you in person yet. Um, so at least for me um, in the role of CDBG and partnership, um, I didn't have a, a, a model that I could uh, follow because I didn't ever overlap my predecessor. Um, so hearing this, you know, like it's definitely, you know, I'm planning my next year basically. Uh, and so, um, you know, if I can at all incorporate more of your input, especially when it comes to planning and having that, um, you know, you are on my list of um, people to meet. Uh, but if I can integrate you better, um, then I and I'm hearing that, that that's definitely something you want. Um, then I'm definitely willing to do that, and I'll stop there. Uh, thank you, Keith. Um, uh, I couldn't see who was up next, Spencer or Beverly. Um, well, I'll be real quick because I know I've talked a lot and Bev probably has stuff to say, but Keith, I think, I hope, and I'm assuming I speak for everybody on this board that none of the frustrations that we're expressing have anything to do with you professionally or personally in the slightest. And I think we all understand the horrible position that you're in. Um, I think that the only question I would have, and I, um, is with all those developments and all those things you talked about coming on, I mean, I, I don't, again, my experience in the housing partnership is very limited. The only times in my, his, in my very brief tenure that I've had to vote on anything in terms of developments is sort of a to step away from a rubber stamp, hey, we support this, this is a great idea type of vote and not anything like, oh, okay, well, can we talk about this development or you know, how does this factor in or okay, why are we using that for housing and not this for housing? Um, and I think that the latter there is probably more of what we wanna be involved in um, and just, aren't and that's nothing to do with you personally but i think in terms of or professionally but just the structure of how planning is now being undertaken in northampton is my hunch that's all it's all you bev i was essentially going to say what you just said um <clears throat> all of the stuff you alluded to keith is of great interest <laughs> i wish that's how we spent our time and 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 as spencer said uh, that to the extent that people had concerns about strategy, um, there was a place to express them. Um, it is so much easier to talk about what could, should maybe be done differently in order to increase the volume, because that's what it's about, of housing. I'm not saying dumb housing, but the volume of good quality housing. Um, it, 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 there's always more you can do. And there's always a bunch of choices to get made along the way. And I think what you're hearing is people here would like to be part of um, helping to make those strategic choices. Um, I just want to go back to the mass exodus thing. I did not mean to suggest that I am advocating for a mass exodus. I think that's a, a um, kind of a, the kind of statement that people can kind of just view as anger. But I was hearing enough people talking about their own personal 
uh, uh, relationship to the partnership, and I think it might feel like a mass exodus after this meeting. I had I came to the meeting um, uh, with the expectation that if the meeting didn't seem to have any more um, value in my life than they have, that I would resign. Um, uh, and I'm not sure how to gauge whether or not there's any pathway forward, which is why I put the question the way I did, but I very much agree with the way ACE presented it. For each person, it's gonna be a personal choice. And as Spencer said, the best way for us to at least either exit or hang on, depending on your personal choice, is to try and condense all of what we've said tonight in a, in a letter to the mayor uh, and the planning director, I would suggest, and the city, city council. Um, so, yes, thank you. Thank you, Beth. Um, Richard, and then Gordon. Sorry, I'm not sure. I, I agree that Bev, you know, point about a mass exodus being viewed as just anger. I think if if some or many of us choose to depart around this cluster of reasons, a articulated letter or position paper ought to be in place. And I also think that the way to talk intelligently and get heard is to respectfully ask to be an agenda item on city council. We've all volunteered enough time that the city council and we should go to a council member and ask them to sponsor putting us on the agenda for five or six minutes so that we can talk about what a loss of the partnership might be. Uh, I'm going to do something that I hope isn't tacky. Um, Laura Baker is here, and you all may not know this, but Laura was a longtime member of the partnership way back when, when it was very active. And I'm sure she is in an awkward position right now. But Laura, if it's in your heart and you have any thoughts that you would like to share about what our role was and how that might inform things or things that you might have, I would certainly, uh, you know, you have so much, um, uh, you have walked down this path for so long. I, I would welcome that. So long. Sorry, my dog's going crazy. I'll be right there. Oh, shush. Um, Yeah, I do. I was on the partnership at a time when we did spend a lot of time evaluating requests for funds for, for CDBG money, and that was meaningful. Um, some of the other stuff we did is, is similar to what's still happening on the housing partnership. Um, I do feel like the dynamic with staffing uh, and the investment of staff resources has shifted pretty dramatically um, over the years. Um, when Peg Keller was hired initially, she was hired, what was her job title? I mean, she was like housing coordinator for the city. I mean, it was a fairly dedicated position um, and she was a full-time employee. So that's a really different issue. She worked directly under the mayor's office um, for her tenure. And then when she left, uh, the work shifted over to the planning department. And I do have the impression that some of the things that the partnership may be a, a victim of its own success to some extent. So that in fact, Northampton as a municipality and as a municipal staff um, is quite skilled in facilitating and promoting the development of affordable housing. Um, and I think particularly during Wayne's tenure, I mean, just almost masterful. Um, and so the temptation to just kind of move move the puzzle pieces behind the scenes um, seemed to prevail uh, more than doing a more inclusive kind of community-based process. Um, for me personally, being a, an affordable housing developer, I am pretty desperately interested in having allies in the work who aren't me. 
So who are not going to be accused as we are of being in it for the money and just being like greedy developers. So having other voices that can speak and advocate both for affordable housing as, a, as a, on principle um, and also for particular developments. Um, we went through a process in Amherst with a building that's now up and beautiful, um, but without the support of that housing trust and the advocacy, it wouldn't have happened. Like I know it would have been shot down. So Northampton is right now in a political climate where I feel like it's pretty supportive of affordable housing. But as we see the trends in our country, so too we may see them in Northampton that there's been, and it's starting, East Hampton is having a real backlash um, right now um, against dense housing, code read affordable housing. Um, and there's, I, I hear rumblings of that in Northampton as well. Um, and so I am worried that we protect you know, a developer's ability to create affordable housing and to be supported. Um, so that's, it's very self-serving. <laughs> that, that's my interest um, in making sure that there's a housing partnership. I would love to see it have more agency, um, certainly, than it does right now. Um, I do think having money to disperse is a powerful tool. Um, Bev also, I know, sits on the CPC. And interestingly, we've felt all kinds of love from the CPC lately. So, and that wasn't always true. So again, it's, I feel like some of it's being a victim of our own success. It's like, there's no need that I feel now to kind of turn out masses of people to speak on behalf of affordable housing before the CPC, because they seem eager to do the affordable housing work. But again, it's a pendulum. <laughs> and if they start putting a lot of money to affordable housing, it it will shift inevitably, will shift back to some other, you know, local priority. Um yeah, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. Okay. Um, while you're still on the spot, I wanted to ask you um, about, um, I, I had a thought um, because one of the two um, suggestions that we made recently as a partnership, um, one was to meet with developers, the other one was, it has been to um, reinstate the affordable housing, the municipal affordable housing trust. Um, I kept thinking just because we didn't have a real good conversation with the mayor or even um, when Carolyn was here last month about the reasons, um, you know, real reasons why uh, why there's been um, resistance to, to restarting it at, at the um, city level. And I thought, because I, I kept doing some more research after that, and one of the things that I saw was that some cities that have a, uh, a CDC don't have a municipal affordable housing trust um, because of potential like um, uh, not a conflict but like uh, competition. Would you see, you know, a, a, a trust fund as a as a sort of competition rather than like a, no. a good opportunity to collaborate? No, I would not. I would see it as a resource. I mean, yeah. I've given suggestions in the past um, to this group about why I think a planning department might balk, partly at having to staff another committee and um, mention that the Amherst Municipal Housing Trust was a, it was a, a, it morphed from its comparable to a housing partnership. And so I don't think there's enough volunteer energy to have both. And so I would be looking, if I were on your group, I would be looking to take this energy and put it into a new form, not to try to parallel track both, both functions. Um, and I don't know how much conversation, I, I my guess is that the city council would be concerned um, to hear this conversation. My guess is that the planning other planning department staff and mayor's office would be concerned to hear this conversation. And I'm not sure 
they're not here. So I don't know how much people know about what's being talked about um, right now. Yeah, well, I know that the the staff finish is the real, that's a real, you know, uh, yeah. you know, clear, yeah, I mean, concern, you know, staffing another and, and getting folks. I, I definitely get that. Yeah. Um, it's not and impossible, this, though. No, and, and, you know, this, what Amherst has done is they've actually requested CPA money, gotten it for the trust, and used it to pay their own consultant. So they've actually eased the burden considerably on the city staff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of a win-win. So I just yeah. I kind of, I'm like, is the messaging not lining up <laughs> for everybody? If, if um, I'm remembering correctly when I was active, one of the trustees came from the partnership. There was someone, a member who was on, who played both roles. I don't have that. Am I remembering that correctly, Richard? That's correct. Someone... And in fact, for a while, we were the Fair Housing Committee. It doesn't, yeah, the committees the can't be sort of dual hats. And that's always what I was going to advocate for if we got any further down the road, unless there was energy to, to split it off. I, I, I view the staffing as, you know, yes, it's a problem and yes, it's hard, but it shouldn't be. Um... Yeah. Um, yes, Amherst used to have um, a thing that was more like the partnership, and then yep. it turned into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, Correct. and that um, partnership thing is no longer active. So they have just moved everything into right. the. That makes yeah, sense. They... Makes sense. Um, uh, actually, Richard, you touch on something that um, actually I think we still are the uh, we still serve as the city's fair housing committee. Uh, that's required by HUD, right? Right, and the city will be in potentially deep sewage if we uh, disband. All I right. think Bev has her hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Bev. Sorry. No worries. Um, Gordon had his hand up for quite a while. I assume you are good. I was just going to piggyback back on something that Keith had mentioned about the different ways and that the city is already really, I mean, they're doing, I mean, the city is, should, should, you know, it's done a great job with supporting affordable housing. There's no doubt about that, but, but there's more to be done. And the, what, what made me, what I wanted to focus on was, you know, right now we're, we have a, this huge housing crisis in the state. And um, it seems a shame that we're not, that we're talking about disbanding when this is something which is like, maybe there's a really a need for us and a role for us to be able to help guide the city. A lot of money is going to be put on the table in the next year or so. And I'm just still wondering what is what's this what's the city's what's the city's doing about trying to get a piece of the pie that's out there there's all that bond bill and the housing bill and, and is the city actively looking to get how and is there a role for us in being able to help steer the conversation on that thank you gordon yeah uh, go ahead beth well i felt that it was only appropriate given uh laura's comments that i uh, say that I resigned from the CPC uh, about a week ago um, to the extent it's useful to, to, to explain why I am a housing nerd and it's what I like to do. And it was stunning to me how few housing proposals come to the CPC relative to the size of the dollars and you all know that the CPC has a, 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 an obligation to fund a wide variety of things. But for me, it, I didn't add value and it didn't feel that interesting to watch millions of dollars usually bonded over be spent on renovating city property. And it's an eligible use and a good use. And these are important historic properties. But I, you know, it was not anything that I could really add value to. Um, and I'm glad to hear that um, you associate my presence in any way with the receptivity of the CPC to housing. But I think part of the reason is, A, you do great work, and as does Habitat, and that's where the, two, the proposals come from, every funding round. Um, and um, there's an obligation to spend at least 10% of the money on housing, I'd like to see that be at least 50%, but that's a different discussion. Um, and um, when you bond, 
to fulfill a funding need of a very large project like Masonic Hall that needed $2.7 million. You do what um, was uh, alluded to earlier, you basically borrow against future funding rounds, right? So if it takes 10 years to pay back that 2.7, it comes out of successive rounds of funding for CBC. And that's a really good strategy as long as there's a strategy behind it for leveraging all of the dollars that are available relative to all the priorities in the city. <clears throat> and I just never really got what those priorities were. And again, probably it's because I'm new and, uh, but again, it's been, uh, it's just been interesting for me to watch um, what I consider to be a relatively um, unformed or unstrategic way of thinking about the correlation between investment in affordable housing and the outcomes that you're going to get in the community. Leveraging state money, somebody said, very important evidence that the community cares and is behind the cause, very important. Um, and it takes a while to you know, both create um, developer interest in your community, enough land and zoning access for uh, significant development to happen. And then when you create that, to have the resources uh, to fund it. So there was this confluence for me of um, experience with the partnership and the Affordable Housing Trust effort um, and again, I, I say nothing critical about the functioning of the CPC. It is a very professional and well-run organization, but it is a funder. That's what it is. There are not conversations about strategy that happen at those meetings. There are not conversations about priorities except relative to the funding categories. Um, and so it just sort of left me feeling like, I don't know, maybe I need to go volunteer for Habitat, although I don't have any building skills. End of speech. Thank you, Beth. And um, also, I just want to say that um, I don't think the mass exodus um, uh, point you had earlier um, was off base. I mean, I've been concerned about that uh, for a couple of months now. Um, and I think, you know, um, we've probably all thought, of, uh, thought about reconsidering our our role here and 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 our time spent volunteering in this committee, but um, I will say that um, with the housing crisis um, and the way it is uh, all over the country, all over the state, and 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 right here, um, it, if there was ever a need for a group like ours, um, more important, uh, the, I I honestly couldn't see a more important time to be doing this work. Um, and so um, having said that, I really uh, hope that we can um, work with the city. The city can work with us to uh, reestablish um, our role and our place in, in this community. Um, and, uh, and we can, um, and that we could uh, work this out so that we are, doing the work that needs to get done. Um, and um, I mean, I guess that's that's uh, where we're at. And I think if we, um, I, I did also want to mention that, um, and I mentioned it a, a few months ago, but what about the possibility of, um, uh, of uh, you know, reestablishing the, the affordable trust um, and uh, staff it with this uh, membership. Um, so, I mean, th these are things to think about. And um, um, I think that the city, the mayor and the planning department will uh, see this uh, meeting uh, for one. And secondly, um, um, we will need somebody to perhaps help us write the letter to the city or uh, we should schedule a time to uh, go before city council. Um, but I would strongly encourage us not, definitely not to give up. Uh, Ace? So 
admittedly, I'm saying this as someone who's leaving the partnership, um, but I think it's important to have a uh, point at which you check in to see if things have changed meaningfully, if the, you know, mayor's office is or is not, uh, you know, responding to, to changes and, you know, being proactive about the role should be if city council is or is not, you know, having a, a member join to give more meaning to our meetings, to these meetings, uh, because it very easily devolves into, well, we'll we'll talk more next month, we'll talk more next month, and before you know it, a year has passed and nothing has changed, and nothing has gotten done. Um, so my recommendation is, you know, set a point in the future to check in and say, hey, what's changed and is it enough? Thank you, I appreciate that, Ace. So, what do we want to do, folks? Um, should we uh, wait to hear back from the city before we schedule our next meeting, or uh, what? What do we do, Edgardo? How much longer are you with us in 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 Ace? Is this your last meeting? I was planning on this being my last meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was actually wanting to resign uh, a couple of months ago. Um, but given the status of where we were, I just didn't feel I didn't want to leave uh, just yet. Um, and there's just still a part of me that um uh, wants to see this uh, committee back doing doing the work that it's supposed to be doing. Um. So um, I'm up in the air, to be honest. I'm up in the air. Um, I am 90% out the door, if that helps. Um, and then um, I would say within the next uh, two months. Honestly, tonight I'm here to help facilitate the meeting um, and, and to see if folks were still uh, interested in, in being part of this. Um, I would step back. Definitely don't want to chair or vice chair or anything um, but, um, I would say, uh, probably, I don't know. I don't know. I'm here to help and I don't want to see this, uh, committee, um, continue to go the, the path that it's going. Something's got to change and I'm, I'm hoping that I can be helpful somehow. And I don't want to put others on the spot, but is there anyone, is it fair to say that Everybody else was sort of on the fence about continuing as well. Is there anybody that was like, I'm gung ho, I'm going to ride this through no matter what? I am I definitely pretty... on the fence, if not yeah. out the door, but more to Gardo's point that there's going to be money coming up. And this also to Keith's point, he didn't say the money thing, but my only concern or my cold feet uh, on an immediate mass resignation is simply the amount of time it takes to refill the board just on stupid procedural steps of needing the city council to, you know, two readings and all this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and I would not necessarily want to impact Northampton if there isn't a housing partnership. That being said, however, my impression, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but short of our co-hat of being the Fair Housing Committee, I don't think if the housing partnership itself ceased to exist that anything would change in the machinations of city government. I mean, I, I just don't see where our input is, is, is going right now. Um, that being said, I would, trying to be a quasi-professional about this and not, you know, a pissed off committee member, I would perhaps recommend that we as a committee write, and I can draft it if you want, a letter to the mayor and the city council highlighting our positions um, and with 
a proverbial ultimatum. Like either this gets addressed, and to Richard's point, we want to speak in front of city council, but until we get some resolution, I mean, we have, I would just think, unless a member of the public shows up, we don't really have a, a duty to hold an hour long meeting. You know, we can show up and immediately okay. vote to close the meeting unless we have an agenda item. Um, and I think that in the interim, we just do that until, you know, the United States Senate does it to keep the Congress in session. So there's no reason we can't appoint some schmuck to open and close the meeting every month until we get some type of resolution out of the city. Um, but I would, you know, the better angels of my nature say that you know, a mass resignation while instantly satisfying is, is would end up ultimately sending a slightly wrong message. And it would be far easier for the city council and mayor to dismiss, right? Because if we all say, you know, if we all go at once, they can pin it on something. But if I think we have a duty for each other and everybody else to Bring it to everybody's attention first. I mean, like they're dismissing us now. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm I'm just as ticked off, but I think that everybody resigning all at once is in as close proximity to our last chair resigning due to the housing trust and backlash from our trying to reach out to developers. Um, almost feels more like a personality conflict than an actual board committee policy statement that's conveyed through our municipal channels and, you know, it, it and sort of echoing, you know, this if city government has been centralizing administratively for whatever reason in the mayor's office, well, then we should get it outside of the mayor's office to the city council, is all I'm saying. And you, Ace, you obviously don't need to stick around for that, but I, I just feel like, I don't know. I like to think that we, if more people knew how little we actually do, they could decide. Let the, let the city decide. If it says, okay, well, look, we don't need this partnership because all we're supposed to do is talk at farmers markets and rubber stamp you know guess who's when are we going to vote no on affordable housing project right that would be that would get headlines right housing partnership votes no for affordable housing that i mean unless we want to do that i think we should send a letter this is just my thought and yes it's maybe we copy the gazette you know we could do whatever it is that we want but i i just think storming off lets us be painted as less than what we are. That's all. Uh, Richard, yeah, thank you, Richard. Um, I want to try and address Gordon's point about saving some time and, and see if I can synthesize something. Uh, one would be a, a question, given that the state of affairs, I'm wondering, Edgardo, any chance that you would just... Uh, coast along as co-chair and that we set aside officer elections, which seems sort of absurd at this point until we do that. And then uh, I would be in favor of something along the lines of uh, Spencer writing a summary letter, very, uh, you know, profound concerns, you know, just not take the emotion out of it. You know, we think it's an important tool that's necessary. And also ask Keith to convey with some urgency both to Carolyn and the mayor that there was a pretty, um, um, let me sidebar here. Keith, how quickly tell the uh, recorded thing is ready and posted? When does that happen? It's uploaded tomorrow morning when I get to work. Okay, um, no, right. So but... that will be available for uh, Spencer to refer to for the letter. And it's a pretty good summary, you know, our discussion of, I think, our concerns and suggest that there's some urgency 
that they listen to it and try and work with us to come up with a meaningful plan is how I would suggest a possible next step. And I would make a motion to that if, if that's everybody's pleasure. I would Spencer, second that. And Spence, are you willing to do that? And, and, and then there's a logistical question is, do we, how do we do this under open meeting? If Do we designate and authorize or should we have, does Spencer need, want to work with one or two people to just to help to vet the ideas that we're going to put in the letter? And I, then trust that, that that small committee can send it without the full committee review or we wait till the next meeting? I would make the point that I think in the spirit of the open meeting law, as long as it sticks to points that we have discussed in the meeting, that we are within the spirit of that and that there be um, a, a couple people who are willing to review the letter before it goes out because it's an important letter. Um, so maybe a de facto, uh, I don't want to call it a subcommittee, but a a, a, a a fact check before it goes out to make sure it's the tone is what we in, have articulated here and that it speaks from what we have already discussed in open meeting. And, and, you know, if somebody's unhappy with us, they can boot an open meeting, they can boot us off the committee. <laughs> Hey, Richard, I think it would be great if you or Gordon or one of the uh, other old timers were part of the review, because I think some of the history that you've shared is part of the storytelling um, about the whole uh, evolution and what we are now left with. Um, I would be happy to contribute if I'm useful. I don't need to if I'm not. And I am now feeling um, convinced uh, that um, I certainly will hold my seat until this plays out a little bit because I have become convinced that uh, having a bunch of empty seats is not going to help the process. Yeah, I agree. And I'm happy to draft that letter. And I'll even, before I forget, do it tonight. And I can circulate it to whomever wants to help review it. Um, I will endeavor to capture some of that history but i think some of that that's where i agree with you bev some of you know if richard or gordon you could chime mm -hmm. into everything we've already discussed in the massachusetts open meeting laws about the history of the the partnership i mean i don't think i think we just we it needs to be in there as a contrasting point to what we've all talked about so i'm happy to, to try to memorialize that in a, a professional persuasive and mildly aggressive way. Um, and I, I would simply ask, however, that we as a committee um, decide whether or not we want to include some type of resultant, not ultimatum, but help us help you or what, right? Because if we don't include an or what, we're just right where we are and right where we've always been. So if we we might, so anything on that. I, I think that what you can do is, you know, allude to the, the record of the meeting that without a change, if you look at the expressed sentiments of the members that, you know, spoke and it's a matter of public record, there is profound uncertainty for the future of the committee you can let the meeting be the 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 stick i think okay yeah i could just say if you you know a super at the very least a super majority of the members if not the entire committee has expressed a very firm and clear desire to resign give if unless some policy changes are implemented or something nice and pollutant like that yes Put we're that now in. down to seven members we had excuse me uh Three, seven, nine, ten. nine is what I see. Well, I what's the, I don't what's the status of um, Hannah and um, when? I mean, um, I don't, don't any rate, to... regardless, we're perilously close to not even be able you know, to have a quorum at any meeting. So I, I think it's a very real thing. So okay. I, I'll I put think that in. 
Okay, I, I'm just so you all know, I haven't talked about this. I've been thinking I should resign for years now because I've been doing it for so long. But I think it's important work, but I'm frustrated. And it, it's a precious legacy here. And I don't cast it aside lightly, but I, I do think that there is a sense of urgency. And I'm completely swamped with personal things, but this is important enough that I will I will work with you on this. Should we go on record as having authorized the letter um, writing? And then I, I'm assuming that most people will 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 want to be added as a signator, but I think that people have the right to review it before they add their name. So that's a process that may have to happen outside of meeting, but maybe after the final draft is circulated, people can then say, yes, please include me on as a, as uh, someone whose name goes off the bottom. Works for me. Yes. Um, thank you, Richard. And thank you, Spencer. Um, I am definitely on board and I appreciate um, folks um, uh, wanting to go this extra step. Um, and yes, I will, I can hang on um, until we figure this stuff out because it definitely does sound ridiculous to have vice chair and chair nominations right now. Um, but can I make a motion? So, because I think Gordon's right. Yes. Uh, I, the housing partnership, um, because of the concerns about Express Tonight, authorized Spencer to work with a couple of people, Gordon, Bev, Richard, and whoever he chooses to articulate the concerns that were expressed at the meeting and put them in a written form for the ease of communication to uh, the planning department and the mayor and the city council. Uh, can I hear, uh, do I hear a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, motion passes. My email and I think everybody's email is in that last email I just sent. Yeah. Um, out of respect for sending a message and maintaining quorum, um, I won't leave the partnership tonight, but, uh, like I, for, for message sending purposes, but I think I am mm, still the most out the door. Thank you. Ace, thank, but thank you, Ace, for everything you've done. You've done a lot of work on the side for this committee and I, it's not, it's been recognized. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, okay. Uh, and thanks again, Laura. That was very helpful. You're welcome. I just wanted Laura's dog to meet my dog. <laughs> I got mine in the video. So many cute yeah, dogs. Wait, I have another cute dog. He doesn't like being lifted, but he's oh, my goodness. Look at those eyes. <laughs> okay, I move to adjourn unless there's other business. All right. All in favor? I think, I think we have a consensus. Right. Okay. Take care, Bye. everybody. Thank you. Right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.